and welcome back to my studio. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and I make all things party and event. And today I want to walk you step by step through the process of creating a tablescape. No matter the type or theme of your next party or event, by the end of this video, you'll have all the tools you'll need to create a beautiful table. So follow along and I'll show you how to do it. The first thing to consider when creating a tablescape is the size and the function that your table needs to serve. Whether that's a food or beverage station, a guest book signing table, or you're setting a dining room table for a holiday, you need to make sure there's plenty of room for the actual function of that table. And sometimes it can be helpful to pre-lay out dishes or the guest book onto the table so you can visualize how much space you have to add the decorations. With that in mind, we can now decide on a color scheme or theme for our tablescape. Having inspiration photos, a mood board, paint swatches, or a word or phrase that embodies the theme of the event will act as a guide for choosing all the elements we need to gather for this tablescape. For example, the tablescape I'm creating in this video, I looked up several images of neutral fall weddings, and those photos are what guided me in choosing the elements I'm using today, including the color scheme, which is these soft blue-tinged greens, creamy whites, and neutral browns. To give our tablescape visual interest, we need to incorporate different heights into the design. And you can use almost anything to give you that variation in height, as long as it fits within the theme of your event and it's structurally sound enough to support whatever you're going to put on top of it. These pieces make up the foundation of my tablescape, so I'm gonna put them on the table first. Now I've got this antique toolbox, and instead of laying it flat on the table, I'm actually gonna stand it up on its side so it's taller and more visually interesting. And that also means I've got more space out the front of the table for the function of this table. I've also got a couple of these risers that I'm put off to the right hand side and I want to create an asymmetrical design. So the right hand side of my table is going to be a little taller than the left hand side. I'm going to add more height to the right with this floral arrangement that I've put together. And this piece serves two purposes. It gives me height, but it also gives me texture. And texture is the next element we need to harness to have a beautiful tablescape. In many designs, textures achieved by incorporating florals, and that's because foliage and flowers have so much variation in their size and color and shape, and that gives us a lot to look at. And from a designing perspective, there are so many options to choose from. I'm using all silks today, but I've got a couple of different foliage options, as well as using a couple of different flower shapes, all that fit within my color scheme. Now, you don't have to use just florals. You can use anything that has a lot of visual interest. So I've got some jute placemats, as well as these wood twig spheres that all add to the texture of my table. The jute placemats are going to make up one of the base layers of my design, so they're going on the table next, and I'm tucking them in near my height-giving elements because I'll be layering lots of other things on top of these mats. From here, we need to add our large or focal elements to the table next. So my focal element for this design is this gold welcome pumpkin. I'm going to put it near the right hand side because I want that to be where people's eyes are drawn when they approach this table. In addition to that, I'm going to start placing anything that's fairly large. So my large pumpkins, the twig spheres, as well as groupings of candles. Now the candles I'm putting on the right hand side, two of those are actually the same height but I've got them in a grouping of three. So to make them look like they're different heights, I'm gonna put one on a different pedestal from the other two. And even though those candles are the exact same, once you've got them separated like this, you can't even tell. Once all the large elements are in place, it's time to bring on the florals. So I have this hole kind of in the center of my table and I wanna fill that up with a floral arrangement. Now I just have a simple cylindrical vase. I'm going to use three different florals. I have this greenery that will give me a lot of airy texture. I have these long florals, which will give me a lot of height. And then I've got my hydrangeas, which will give me a lot of close knit volume in the center. And I'm just gonna intersperse those so that they're nicely mixed and place that at the very back of my table behind my orbs. Even though we have a lot of elements on the table at the moment, it still looks pretty sparse from a design perspective. So the next step is to fill in all the holes and I'll be doing that with these greenery garlands. So I'm gonna take it and start draping it around the orbs, underneath the pumpkins, around the candles, anywhere where you can still see the table or the legs or the mechanics of anything. I'm gonna start camouflaging that with this lush greenery. So not only are we gonna get the texture and the color, we're gonna hide the gaps and we're going to 
unify the look of the table. So by repeating the greenery all the way across the table in different spots, it's gonna make it look like it all belongs together. So once I've got all the greenery tucked in and I'm happy with the placement, I can start adding all the little details. And these are items that are meaningful to you or your event and just bring the final touches all together. So I've got some mini pumpkins I'm gonna scatter around that will be the cherry on top of this design. Finally, the most important thing to keep in mind is give yourself plenty of time to create your tablescape. By nature, these can be really fiddly. You're moving lots of little elements around until you're pleased with the overall aesthetic, and that can be quite time consuming. So make sure you're giving yourself plenty of time during the setup of your event, or my preference is actually to build a mock-up of the design prior to the event so I can gather all the pieces, I can have plenty of time to play around with it so I'm happy with how it looks, and then I'll take multiple photos of that setup, disassemble it all, pack it up, and then I can go to the venue. Once I'm at the venue and I'm under the gun for time, I can pull that photo back up, rearrange everything to how I had it set before, and it gives me a beautiful finished product in a really quick amount of time. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time to accomplish this project, and you'll be able to achieve something really beautiful. I hope you're inspired by today's project, and that this gives you the confidence to try out something like this. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe below, and don't forget to check out our Patreon group if you'd like to up your party planning game. So until the next time, you can check out some of my other videos over here. And remember, stay creative, everybody. Bye.